Okay, playing an instructional video I did 10 years ago. I'm gonna to try to follow it and correct. I know I did things I don't want to do the same way right now, so I'm gonna correct those in this follow along so you'll hear it in the background, I think. Might be a little boring. Copy me as you go, because as I'm watching it, I'm going to be doing some things. I might be stretching a little bit, okay? So copy me the whole way. You're supposed to copy me because I'm copying that. You copy me, and I'll correct anything that might have hurt you in the old one. All right, here we go. Flat hit sport movement, ski movement training, uh, September 2010. Thanks for, for watching it. Uh, my name is Patrick Connolly. I work at Whitefish Mountain Resort in Whitefish, Montana. Moved up here in 2006 with my family, two boys, to uh, get a fresh start in schools, be with my father, who was given notice on life, which we got a great three years with him. I signed up to ski at Big Mountain to teach at Big Mountain, uh, originally just to see if the kids would uh, bite in a new sport. We got a family pass and all those little perks. So. I took to it really strong. I got a crazy passion for, for growing and learning. And um, as my passion grew, my goals grew. Um, PSIA, the Professional Ski Instructors Association, they certify you as an instructor at a level one, two, or three at an advanced level. And they do that through, they have a technical team that sets up the teaching, um, uh, clinic, teaching criteria for our clinic leaders who teach the, um, and examine the uh, instructors as they grow through the program. So they give you your certification based on your teaching ability and your skiing ability. And it, it's just a great way to measure change in, in life and, and try to do something athletic. Not too many ways to do that, uh, which makes skiing such a great sport, uh, teaching skiing especially. Um, so uh, as this has grown, I've been writing a lot and trying to develop ways to overcome my personal uh, problems, rehabilitating my ankles, my shoulders, the imbalances in my muscle systems. And uh, you know, I've got a 280 page uh, content organized uh, book, if you will. But anyhow, so we need to um, uh, follow along with this. Is that we're going to do some uh, movement patterns that we do in skiing. So that's what I'm trying to teach you and train your bodies to do the movements and make the movements that we make, okay? And we're going to start with the ankles. And you go ahead and follow along. Uh, foot construction, as you're moving your ankles, we've got three pads on our feet. I'll be referencing those. We've got the heel, we've got the pad behind the two big toes, and the pad behind the three little toes. Okay, so as I'm talking about edges, we're changing our pressures from pad to pad, inside edge, outside edge. Okay, does that make sense? But what we want to do is we want to move our ankles double time, I guess, if you will, hitting the very limits of what you can pull them back. Okay, so move those ankles double time. You can do this sitting in the chair if you want. Um, but this is one movement. This is a pressure management uh, muscle system. Okay, we can manage the pressures in the snow through this one directional muscle system right now. Okay, so be sure if you're, uh, you know, if you haven't concerned for something, show this video to a uh, doctor or your PT and, and make sure they're cool with all this, uh, all these movement patterns that I'm going to be teaching with you. I don't want to cause you any more injury, uh, you know, or undo suffering, but we're going to force some suffering through so working our feet. I should be getting a little heat going on. And as you do that, stretch, extend to the limits there, and pull this foot back as far as you can. That's flexing. This one's extending, this one's flexing, okay? Now my left foot is extending, this one's flexing. So hit those limits as you do that. So that gives us some pressure for management. Now the edging control, we can tip our feet this way. So go ahead and tip your feet back and forth. And these muscle systems will help us manage the edge control of our skis. Okay? So developing the muscle systems tipping side to side, we don't use these very often in everyday life.
sites, so they're commonly underdeveloped. Okay, so this was, I can feel the heat in my shins, the side of my shins, okay? And we want to pull to the limit, uh, twisting our feet one way and the other way. Pull to the limits, okay? So we're just doing that edging motion, right? Legs are staying fairly parallel. Knees are staying kind of quiet. We want to force the work just in the ankles if we can, okay? So we got two motions now. We got an edging and we got a pressure and extension motion. So we're going to be referencing uh, rotor edging and pressure a lot through this, uh, through this teaching, the okay? like that So mix those up between thing. those and play with them. Study your own Thanks, feet, your pains, and then reach. You can combine the two. You can extend while you're tipped, okay? So extend while you're tipped and move that through all the ranges of motion, okay? Always match in both feet, okay? So if the feet are tipped this way, we're extending with those still tipped that way. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay, so we want to develop those timing coordination between both feet. Movement patterns, okay? So pressure movement, this helps us absorb pressure in the snow coming from the changes in terrain, and this helps us manage the edges, on which edge we want to, to manage those pressures with. Okay, so if we're tipped on this edge, we can manage pressures on those edges. If we're tipped on this edge, we can manage pressures on those edges. Okay, make sense? All right. So we're heating that up, this is five minutes. We want to work these things for five minutes, get those ankles working. Okay, and just study how they, they extend and, and flex. Just study your own body and see what happens, see where your pains are coming from, okay? Nice, so we're getting good. Now we can get a little bit of rotor in there by our, turning our knees a little bit, okay? So our knees can tip the same way. So if you got, you know, if you got kids and you want to do this, turn some music on, like old McDonald's had a phone. Yeah, 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 something like that, I don't know. Or turn some music on and try to get some rhythm going and timing into these tipping and extendings, okay? And that'll help us develop some, some fluidity, some rhythm for skiing on the snow as well, as well as getting the, the pressure management muscle systems, these extension and flexion, and getting the tipping, the edging muscle systems starting at our feet, okay? So we're going to work those together. You can roll circles, anything you want. As long as when you're rolling, you're on the same edges, okay? We're turning the feet to the same edges, okay? So we're rolling to these edges and rolling to these edges. So all that stuff is good, all right? Nice. That gets you a little heat up, okay? So we're going to go into move up from the ankles and these lower leg systems that you should feel nice and warm. Okay, into the legs by doing some squats, all right? So what we want to do is kind of focus on the one leg squats, okay? If you need to do both legs, do both legs. But what we want to do with this, okay, is use, we're going to develop pressure again, okay? So the pressure is your extension and flexion management. So if we hit a bump, okay, and I suck up, I flex, we can manage that pressure. If we stay solid, that pressure is just going to go right through our body. We can also extend and create pressure in the snow. So that flexion and extension is what's going to manage the pressures in the snow. Okay. So we're going to develop that here at home. Focusing on the right leg, mostly. Okay. We're going to do five minutes on each leg. And as you get doing this, you might notice that your heel stays on the ground for a lot of these squats. So what I want to do is try to develop Okay. So the heel we're going to stay on the way. I'm going to stay through the heel. Through the leg system. Okay, this video and has me extending the toe. You can the extension of your foot with the extension the of heel. your hip and the flexion of your foot with the flexion. Extension, flexion. Okay, so we want to do that as we work through these. Okay, keep this leg pointing the same direction if you can. I like to match it up as if it was skiing. 
Not totally crucial, because what we're doing right now is trying to develop the right leg. But the more we can have the rest of the body in the right position, the better we'll be off when we get to the snow. Okay, so we're just focusing on one leg squats. And when you're doing it, you can focus on the inside of your foot as well. Keeping the knee over the inside of your toe. And then move your knee to the outside okay, of your foot. So the outside path there and the inside path here. And everything in Hello, between. Berlin. You want to work Hello. everything in Happy between. sardines to you. Okay. Uh, where's yours? <laughs> so we're adding a little edging into the motion by just tipping the knee out, right? And getting on that outer pad of our foot, working on the right leg. Tipping the knee in, getting on the inner pad of our foot. Okay? So we're driving all that pressure right through the inside, working through to the middle, all right, and then back to the outside. Okay, so we got pressure management, developing the strength to flex and extend in the muscle system. Okay, and edging, we're tipping our feet to roll our knee to the inside, that gives us some edging, muscle system work, and on the outside of the foot, tip the foot to the outside, focusing the weight and pressure on the outside of your foot, that gives us some muscle system development on the outside, okay? And then with that as well, what we want to do is rotate, we're going to bring in a rotor, and we're going to develop the rotation. So I'm on the outside of my foot for the pressure. And I'm rotating, trying to keep my upper body square. Ooh, that's on the outside of my thigh. I like that. Okay, we're rotating that muscle system. And then every stage in between, as you come back to center, my foot's flat. Now we're going to turn this way, feet to the left. Weight over the right, inside of the right foot. Okay, behind the big toes. Okay, keeping our body square and working those muscle systems in a rotated position. So now we've combined flexion and extension, which is our pressure management, edging, which is tipping, on our, tipping our foot to the inside, and rotor as we're rotating our leg system. Okay, and we'll just keep working that one leg, or both legs, you can cut it down. You can work both to get started, keeping the feet matched, okay, and rotating to the outside. Upper body staying towards the camera. Nice. Sense. Trying to keep the hands in a skier position. You can use and help here, okay? So five minutes on that leg, and we'll go to five minutes on the other leg. Okay? We'll try to get this. We'll talk about it again and we'll make it doubly good. Okay, so nice good stance. Pressure on the inside of the foot. Flexing and extending again. Flexing, extending, manages the pressures on the snow. It's a pressure management. Okay. I can tip my foot and my knee to the outside. This side doesn't have much weight on it. This one does on the outside. That edges in the edging skill of skiing. Okay. Focusing on developing the left leg. We won't often ski on this left leg like this with not much weight here, but this system does get incorporated. We'll learn about it. And it's really valuable because it's uh, often underdeveloped, I find. Okay? So and then we can add the rotor in, keeping the upper body forward, rotating that leg while I'm on the outer pad of this foot. It's pointing this leg in the same direction. Okay, not much weight on it for this exercise, but it is still pointing 
the same direction. Okay, come back to straight. And I work to the other side. Steering the feet over there. Nice. Okay, it's good to fire from the glutes down here. So your, your hips stay right in line, drawing kind of a straight line. Maybe tilt it forward a little bit, but it's moving up right like it's on a pole or something right through there. Okay, we don't want to be bending over and standing up. We need to fire those glutes. If you need to use some poles to help out, do. Okay, so we're tipped this way. We're on the inside edge of this foot as we're doing squats. And we're going to go and exercise every stage in between, keeping the shoulders forward, okay, until we come back to flat, we're extending on both pads and rotating to the outer pad as your knee goes out, nice, okay, keeping those feet pointing in the same direction, up, you can slow them down and create a lot more suffering if you like. Ooh, it's getting hot up here. Nice. And every stage in between. Okay, skier squats. Okay, if you're doing them on both legs, that's fine. You can develop in where you're rotating, both leg systems parallel, changing your edges. Outer edge here, inside edge of this foot, okay, and back to flat and parallel legs, and rotate down, changing edges, and back to flat. So these are all things you can play with, with the skier squats. Always keeping the hands and arms forward. Nice. Make sense? So you want to get good at those, where both feet are turning at the same time, and then in the Point in the same direction on the appropriate edges. Nice, right, so you do. And fire from the glutes from down here, okay? Straight ones are fine as long as you're working and studying these, okay? So, rotor, we got that component. We have the edging component, okay? And the pressure management is that extension, okay? Rotate as you drop, rotate back to flat, rotate to the new edges, back to flat, 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 new edges, back to flat. Make sense? Oh my lord. Okay, so we're developing the left leg, right? I like the both legs, that's fine. Whatever you're doing, as long as you keep it moving and keep those movement patterns going, it's most important to study the movement patterns, okay? So these are gonna be tough. You may pause and stop, but focus on these movement patterns, what we're doing, okay? So the edging, pressure, and rotor, all right? Okay, so knee. Head to the back side of the legs. Kind of like kind of hard to come up with something that works in a home. Um, but you can put like a ball between your legs and work this. You can put ankle weights on, or you can create a lot of suffering by creating your own resistance just by curling your other foot and use that foot to create resistance. So. This is a flexion extension which manages pressure, right? So this muscle system can help us manage pressure because it will bend that leg system at the knee. Okay, so we want to develop it, make sure it's good and functional, not just in one direction, but with the hip rotated to the different sides. Okay, so I got my leg rotated to the left, okay? And I'm resisting those, those curls, okay? So now we've added a little rotor into this workout. 
which is pretty easy to do. And then we can rotate to the outside and create resistance there and every uh, stage in between. Okay, so we want it to globally work around that muscle system. So if we rotate it all the way out here, that's good. And then as we move to the middle, we're partly in between, we're doing some curls, rotating partly in between, and then we're back to neutral or a flat foot position. Okay, nice. And then back to the other side, turning that leg and foot over the other way. Okay, so there's also an extension movement, kind of throw it out here, as you go extend out, push your toes out, as you flex, bring your ankle flex, extend your foot, flex your foot. So try to build that into these movements as well, not critical right away, as you get stronger and more coordinated with these, they develop it, okay? So we also have an edging. Okay, we have edging that's involved too. So as our knees turned out, this would be the same as if we're on a turn. So this edge should be engaged as we're doing these curls out here. Does that make sense? Flexing, extending. Flexing, extending. Flexing, extending. Flexing, extending. So you can create your own pain and strain on this. And that's what this is, a, the way my workouts are is I have to create my own suffering pretty much. No machines, works good in a condo, and it's changed my skin in four years dramatically. Okay, so we're turning the foot out this way, and guess what? That edging, we want to have, we're on this edge, making a turn, right? So we want to engage that edge while we're doing these foot movements, okay? Extending the foot, flexing. Extending the foot, flexing. Extending, flexing. Extending, flexing. Extending, flexing. Extending, and flexing. And all the stages in between. Okay, rotating the leg and knee back to center and neutral. And then out to the other side. So these one leg workouts, it's kind of nice if you feel like one leg is underdeveloped, you can work a little harder on one leg than the other, which I've done with uh, I have shoulder issues, I've had to balance that out, back muscles, I've had to balance those out, so sometimes I'll get a little extra focus. My legs were different sizes uh, from uh, water skiing competitively, I used to do that a lot, which overdeveloped one leg, my back leg on a water ski compared to my front leg. Probably because of my bad uh, skiing form, I guess. I mean, too much weight on the back foot. Which in water, in snow skiing, you don't want a lot of weight in your tails either. You want to be pressuring through the front balls of your feet, balancing and managing pressures with the fronts of your feet. And that should be through the front of the heel now in my skiing nowadays. Through the front. Right, so there's one leg. Okay, I'm going to switch over and hit the other leg. See, that is uh, control. The and we just start working those. These are great to work like when you're watching TV, uh, you know, or, or even writing. I do, do some writing, note taking on workouts and this and that. So, yeah. And uh, I learned easier to, to do the fronts of my feet. If you can multi like you can type and move your uh, leg like at so the same time. Front of the foot like is like gum, though. Control. Um, Those front feet pads. Sit there and watch TV. It's easier control. to watch TV than type. All our energy. Okay, so here we are. So we might not get. We're uh, managing the pressures arc. through flexion. The foot's flexing. Strong. And the foot's extending. Foot's flexing. And the foot's extending. You see that? Extend, flex. We want to make sure we're working that into it. So we got that pressure management system, the flexion and extension muscle systems, okay? And then we're gonna build in the rotor to the outside, turning that knee out in the hip socket, 
Nice. You get it out there and then create some resistance as you pull that leg system up. Nice. You can actually uh, push your leg down is what I kind of do with my leg on top and resist. So it's kind of a push me, pull me, I guess. Okay, so it, we're going to rotate and work that all the way through, back to flat, and over to the other side again. Okay, tipping the knee, rotating the knee, and doing those curls, creating some resistance. Now your range of motion will grow. doesn't matter if you don't have a lot of range of motion tipping side to side. That's that's fine, as long as you're getting some good heat on your hamstrings and throughout the different positions of your range of motion, we'll be good. Okay, flex, extend, flex, extend, flex, extend, right, extend, nice. Okay, and then you can go slow, just create tremendous amount of resistance ah. and then push back down resisting going down nice and then another stage in between up and uh, and another stage in between rotating the knee is what I'm doing rotating the knee back in the under uh, straight down pointing straight down and now we're back to neutral create resistance Nice, rotating the knee, so you can tell by your kneecap. Okay, your kneecap will roll to the side as you move your leg over to the side. Ah, nice. There. Extending the foot, flexing, extending, flexing, back to center. Some stage in between, now back to center. Okay, so there's multiple, multiple stages in between. As long as you're working the system as you're rotating, we're blending in and developing muscle systems together. Rotation, muscle system, uh, pressure muscle systems, and edging muscle systems. Nice. And all these will help you with your balance. Rotating back to the flat. Okay, so we're trying to keep the concept of rotor edging and pressure. Anytime we're working a muscle system for skiing, we want to be working something related to rotor edging and pressure management. These are called quite a bit of suffering. Five minutes of managing these. So the kneecap again is a good indicator of whether your knee is pointing out to the right. You might have to roll, lift your leg up a little bit to clear your the thigh muscle so you can get it tipped over. But either way, okay, so that's our hamstrings. So we're worked up from our ankles into our knees, the muscle systems that are surrounding the knees, and now we're going to go up to the hips. The muscle system that creates our, our uh, movement patterns in the hips. Okay, so we're going to stand on one foot, and we can focus on the inside of the foot as our balance point. Um, and then we're going to draw patterns, okay? Figure eights. Pointing our foot one way to the other. Okay, so these have a lot of compound movements, so we'll go through them, and we've got lots of time because I got five minutes on each foot to to try to get this across to you. Ten minutes total of teaching. Okay. So what's happening here is we're basically just managing the edges. There's not much flexion extension. I'm just working the edges. 
okay? And what we want to do is, is we want to be flat as we cross this center line, okay? So we'll have a turn here and a turn shape on the other side. And this is the center line of those turns. So as our foot crosses that center line, we want it to be flat, okay? And then it's going to progress to an edge and progress to the maximum edge out here, okay? And unprogress, unprogress to flat and slightly flexed through the middle, okay? And then as we go across the line on this side, we're going to continue the flexion as we're engaging this new edge, okay? So we're flexing to the maximum edge over here, okay? and the maximum flexion over here on this inside leg system. This would be the inside leg system on a turn. The other leg is going to be over out here. Okay? So this is the maximum flex and maximum edging that we'll get. Okay? And then we're going to start extending this leg system. Okay? And decreasing our edge on our foot to flat at the center line. Right? And progressing that new edge as we're continuing to extend this leg system out to this other side, okay? Because that would be our long leg on a turn out here, and this would be our short leg, okay? So it's going to extend out further. Foot's extended, knees extended, hips extended. Make sense? Okay? And then from this point here, we're going to be starting to flex everything, okay? We're going to work towards a flex position again. So everything's flexing. Controlling everything here as we move across the center line of turns. We're flat, partially flexed, and this leg will continue to flex as it develops to be the inside leg at this other apex on the side of this turn. Okay? Maximum flex there, maximum flex on the foot, okay? and then unprogressing that edge to flat as we hit the center line of turns. Okay? And then we're going to progress an edge, continuing that extension out to the apex. Okay? Unprogressing to flat, continuing that unprogression to maximum edge. Okay? We're going to unprogress here to flat, progressing to maximum edge out here. Unprogressing as we flex to flat, continuing that to maximum edge out here. Okay, to flat, to edge fully extended, to flat, to edge fully flex. Back to flat at center line of turns, to edge fully extended, and back to flat. Okay, so this is the movement pattern that we want to make for that one leg at a time. Okay, does that make sense? Okay, so we're flat, center line of turns. Progressing to full extension, back to flat, progressing to full flexion, and edge on this side, extending, extending to, okay, so we're going from fully extended here to fully flexed on the inside of this turn, okay, to fully extended there, to fully flexed here, fully extend, Fully flex while we're changing edges at the center line of turns. So we want our edge change, everything to develop on this right side. We want it all to develop with this edge of the foot carving that whole thing. Nice there. And everything on this side of the turn, we're going to develop with this side of the foot. Okay? Nice. Make sense? All right. So we'll do that. You want to do that a lot. You feel it in your hip. Okay, we've moved up through the body. Focusing again on rotor, edging, and pressure, those muscle systems that control all that. Okay, so here we are on the other foot. Uh, we're gonna start this out, we're fully extended, right? Last, uh, last foot I tried to focus on the inside, um, my weight over the inside of my foot. Okay. And it seems like I tend to tip on the outside of my foot, I think because maybe it adjusts for balance having this leg out. Not a big deal. We'll work those on the squats, those muscle systems. This is um, what you want. You the main want thing we want to focus on 
Yes, is this yes. movement pattern of With the leg system, movement. okay? Flat. Oh. Inside. Okay, yeah. while we try to balance. It's, like it's actually kind of hard. So you can use both those poles to balance. If we focus on keeping the upper body, still have a little trouble with these exercises, keeping the upper body level, the eyes level, we can be a little better balanced as we do this. But you're going to find yourself looking down and watching this movement pattern. Okay? That's okay. Okay, if we need to see it, we need to see it. Alright? So we'll develop and grow. Okay? So over here, this leg's the inside of the turn, right? This leg would be out here on a, on a turn, apex or fully flex, fully flex, and engaging this downside edge, right? Downside and then we're going to progress that to flat at the center line of turns, right? And continue progressing that extension to maximum edge and maximum extension. Going to the outside. At this apex, this would be the inside leg, it would be short, this is your long leg, right? And then we're going to progress that back to flat at the center line and maximum edge at the apex and back to flat at the center line, progressing to apex back, back. So what you're doing is you're extended long down low here, bringing your foot to flat, continuing that flexion as you're making this turn. Bring that knee high and flat. So you'll have all different ranges that you can do that to. And that's fine. If you're doing them down here, that's fine. Okay, as long as you're, you're understanding and practicing the concepts, okay? The concepts are extension, right? Edging, because we're tipping this inside foot down, and then rotor. We're rotating that leg system back to flat, okay, on a new edge, maximum edge to here, progressing to flat, and continuing that progression to fully extended, okay, progressing to flat, continuing that flexion progression to fully flexed, and back to flat, and fully extended, and back to flat, flexed. Flat, extended, flat, fully flexed, flat. So the quieter we can keep that upper body and work these. Now if you want to work them, anything you're doing in here where you're incorporating the movement patterns is going to take you another step higher, okay? So if you don't have this completely figured out, that's all right, email me. Um, that's fine. What we want to do is work the rotation ability, okay, you can just do this and do it at different levels of extension, okay, you can rotate out here, whatever you're doing, you can kick it around, just be practicing turning your edges properly, you don't want to be kicking this way, you want to be turning the foot there, not there, there, okay, and rotate, keeping the arms forward, and the shoulders pointing ahead. So the goal is this five minutes to balance on one foot, okay, doing these leg movements. Some of you may be able to do them all day long. Others, it's going to be hard. You might use ski poles to help you balance. That's fine. And others, oh my lord, see my legs hurting and I've been practicing a bit. A lot of strain right there. Okay, again, you can go make things a little easier. Because it can get pretty complicated trying to understand this extension to flexion. Oop. Flexion to extension to flexion to extension to flexion over here. Apex out there. Flat and so on. Nice. Okay, so that's our that's our rotor work for the legs, for the hips. Okay, so now we gotta tie in these muscle systems to the strain the core a little bit. Okay, I like to uh, go with the side core. We get a lot of front core to add workout while we're doing these Mother. things. So we're gonna do the sides. Okay, so what we wanna do is lay the side. You can do all kinds of things. Main thing is to get yourself pretty well fixed. I like to have my arms support me here. Be 
pretty sideways, okay? And then just play with those muscle systems. Right now, oh, this muscle, right, my outside of my glute and the hip here from standing on one foot is strained right now. It feels good. I know it's good to work on it. Okay, well, what we're trying to do is work this core. Oh, bad. So whatever you're doing here is fine. As long as you're focusing on pressure management, which is an extension movement, right? This is our pressure management. Keeping the legs up off the ground, that's what's giving you that core workout, okay? Edging movements, okay? We're not extending with this edge down because we wouldn't be on that edge. We're turning the foot like that. So we're keeping that edging muscle engaged. Legs parallel. Okay, trying to keep those legs parallel. And then the rotor movement is going to be working the leg like so. Okay. So you'll feel strain in that hip and in the core. And you can do this with one foot, standing in the middle, flexing, extending, flexing. Or you can do it with both foot. But we want to get these movement patterns right. So one foot may be easier to start with. Okay, extending, right? And flexing. So the heel is following the toe too. We want to make sure the heel follows the path of the toe. That's what we want to do in skiing, is we're going to have that tail of the ski follow the path of the tip. Okay? So all the while we're staying up and crunched. If you need to use less support, that's fine. And if you're doing small arcs, that's fine. Okay? Rotate, rotate, rotate. Heel follows toe, toe follows heel, right? Okay? And then if we get full range of motion, we're going to flex here. We're going to extend to the middle and flex here. And extend to the middle and flex here and extend in the middle, all while we're tipped our edge down, right? Not like that, tipping that edge down. Flexed here, carving that arc to the middle, and flexed here, and carving that arc to the middle, and flexed here. And we can get that some good, smooth transition would be handy, because we'll use those in skiing. Okay, and the quieter and more rotating you can do of your knee, your leg and your hips, it's a little hard to keep this sideways, but we want to work all the angles. Nice. So two legs work too. Okay, so if you want to make it a little more difficult, we want to rotate. Nice. Rotate. And then we'd work the extension in the middle, and flexion, and extension, and flexion, and extension, and flexion, and extension. Try to keep those legs parallel. Extension, and flex, and extend, and flex. And being on the appropriate edges as well. Okay, so trying to turn those feet on their edges, keeping them on their edges while you're flexing, edges, edges, nice, 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 cool, heels following toes, toes following heels, feet parallel, extending together, Flexing, extend, flexing. Ah, uh, extend, flexing, extending. You probably go, these are long segments. Five minutes each side, yeah. And camera sound was time to switch over. Okay, so we mixed in pressure to the extension. We mixed in edging. Trying to keep our correct edges turned for our movements. And then rotor, we're rotating that leg system as we're turning sideways. Okay, and we'll do the same on this side. Okay, so you can use one foot. 
or both. So you'll get plenty of training. If you forget and you're just rolling like this and you're not using the flexion and extension, there's plenty of time because this will take time. If your foot's turned the wrong way, it would, there'll be time to fix all that. As long as you're working the movement patterns, okay? Out of the legs. Okay, so if we were to study this a little more as if it were a skiing turn, if the leg is bent over here, this is coming, it's the outside leg making a turn, so it will always in this exercise reach a fully extended point. Okay? And then it's going to work itself back to a partially flexed over here because it's going to continue to flex as we make that turn. Okay? So what we want, what we're doing is we're taking that component of the turn. Okay? So from out here to the apex and then rotating here. Okay? Trying to keep your body straight and rotate just your legs. Knees pointed down. No, the knees pointed up. The knees pointed down. And then the knees pointed up on the sway. Okay, that's a rotation of the leg system while we're extending the leg system. And we're oh, trying to tip it on edge. See, I didn't have it fully on edge either. Okay. Not this edge, that edge. Nice, 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 nice. And then you can work both legs in. See, so now that we're working both legs in, if we're on an apex, we actually would be right here. Okay? So if that's your apex of your turn, this leg's fully flexed, and this one's fully extended. Okay? And if we're approaching that apex, we're going to be somewhere in between out here. Okay? Fully flexed. And somewhere in between out here. Always on, darn it, turn that edge down because we're still on this side. We're on those edges. Okay? Fully flexed. And somewhere in between. Fully flexed. On this foot, fully extended on that foot tip of that edge. And that's, that's, uh, if you're losing this edge, you're not getting that muscle system engaged because you turn that edge by your QL of your core up here, okay? That helps us turn that edge and turn that leg down, all right? And then somewhere in between on both those there. Extended, somewhere in between. Extended, and somewhere in between. Extend it, and somewhere in between. There we go. Now we got it. Uh, uh, mm. So perfection, not too much of an issue. We'll grow and get better as we go. We're working this core in a rotation patterns, focusing on edging, and our pressure management. Okay, so the idea is to be extended and flexed at the apex up here and somewhere in between here. Keeping the knees parallel or the legs parallel and the edges proper. Okay, extended. Somewhere in between. Extended. Somewhere in between. Extended. And somewhere in between. Extended. Somewhere in between. Nice. Extend. Somewhere in between. Oh, this one needs some work for sure. And then you can rotate them way over. And way over here. So just work those patterns. Heels following toes, toes following heels. And we'll get our concepts of rotor edging and pressure all built in. And with those systems balance.
will improve towards phenomenal. Uh, okay, so we need to work the back. So we worked around, or we had the feet up, we worked the front of the core, we worked the side of the core, and now we need to work the back, lower back. Uh, tie those into our rotor movements and pressure management and extension. So if we're just laying on our back and we rotate and point our knees one way and point our feet over there, okay, we can lift our legs and our knees off the floor one at a time if you like. Main thing is we're exercising those back muscles as they tie in and help rotate our legs one direction to the other, okay? And then we're gonna rotate our legs the other way. Working those legs, you can pick them up and down. You can flex and extend, okay? It's kind of like the ham curls, except we're gonna do all this in five minutes because we're, we're rotating and we're trying to lift our knees off the floor as we do this, okay? Uh -uh. Rotating, rotating, rotating. Oh, and push at the limits of what you can do, and that'll create even more suffering, which is this is good suffering. Suffering brings us to higher grounds. Okay. Nice. Okay, so we're rotating that leg system with using our lower back. Flexing it one way, and the other way. You try to breathe, I'm kind of forcing things and quit focusing on breathing a little bit as I'm teaching air, but it's okay. Um, you can see how far one leg will turn at a time. And then I think you can do those one at a time as well. If both legs are too hard. Uh, okay, so with this we can tip in, we can include the edging, which is the tipping of the feet. So if our legs rotated out this way, that would be the same as if we're on the turn. This edge would be engaged, you want to turn that foot down. And then as you move to flat, your legs straight up here, turn the foot down, flat, foot down, and then flat again. And then as you turn to the other side of that leg system, you're engaging the small toes, okay, this edge of your foot. So rotate and tip your feet from side to side. Let's see if you can see that. Yeah, there you go. And do that with both legs. Nice. Tip in the feet. You can do it extended with the foot or flexed. So you just want to work those rotation muscle systems and the edging of the feet. Okay, and you can flap your feet around if you like. Uh, this one's pretty easy. You gotta create your own suffering. It's pretty easy just to lay there and try to turn your legs and not create enough strength. Strain. So what you want to do is focus on pushing on the limits to create the strain and the uh, development of that muscle system all the way to its attachment. Uh, nice. Okay. Rotate, rotate, rotate. And you can do it with your legs bent at different levels. And yeah, you can do one leg at a time. That's fine as well. As long as you're using all the different rotation points throughout. Makes sense. Nice. Oh, turn that as far out as it'll go. Uh, uh, trying to keep your hip down. I've tried to roll with it. Too. Turn it. Okay, and then you can go as high as you can go too. So try to work that leg system a lot. This will define if you're taking, if you video your workout, you'll see a difference in movement patterns. Which leg will go higher? You can do a test 
to see if the legs are balanced at level and indicate a imbalance in your muscle system. Nice. All right. So upper back, shoulders and head. Okay, that is pretty good stuff. I don't know. What was the with the, uh, the back? shoulders? What I like to do is uh, just stand around with my arms up. It's just, uh, I used to do it this with the kids. I don't know back in football in uh, in Oregon we had hold your arms up competitions and I think two minutes was the maximum or something we were at. It. But anyhow, so you can put wrist weights on for you that are a lot uh, have have greater strength to weight ratios of your arm systems. Uh, strength to weight ratio meaning you have skinny little arms and uh, good strong muscle systems or you might have large super arms with super developed muscle systems so your strength to weight ratio is good or you might have large arms and a weak muscle system which is a poor strength to weight ratio. Okay, So this is just something to work to and what you want to do is reach to the limits and what you can reach out and I feel I feel the strain in my armpits and then rotate. Uh, and so this is really, this will be a lot of our upper body stretching as well. Uh, okay, so we're rotating all the way to the limits, developing that strength and flexibility. So we're developing strength to turn and push on those limits of our flexibility. Okay. And then while we're there, you can activate your muscle systems while you're rotated. Okay. Uh, reaching those limits. Always extending as far as you can and rotating against those limits. Okay. So when you need a break, come back here to hands right here. Okay. And this will be our skiing. This is our skiing position. Gives you a little rest from having those things extended. Okay, so I'll teach you about how to have your hands for skiing. So our hands need to be slightly outside the elbows and elbows in front of and slightly outside our, our um, core. Okay, and then the hands are kind of angled as if you carry your poles, baskets towards the back. Okay, so slight little angle drawn, what would that be? 60 degree triangle. Yeah, that's the strongest triangle actually for crane work. Something I learned in Boeing. Okay, so drawing this this triangle here. Okay, so that's our stance. Okay. <clears throat> now, what I like to do as my shoulders are heating up, we got five minutes to hold our arms up. Another thing I like to do is pretend like I'm on a turn, like in steep terrain or something. And what body position or what would my shoulders do? I find in skiing a lot when I'm skiing. And I'm carving a turn, even on gentle train, whatever, if it's a high degree angle or a lot of G-forces, whatever. I pull the shoulder up so you can play with that and stretch and extend and pull and work that upper shoulder system while you're on edges, okay? So that creates, that creates this muscle system that, that's going to engage and keep you best balanced over this ski, which is our crucial ski when we're carving a turn, okay? So working and playing with that muscle system on this side, and then you turn to this side and develop uh, some strength and stretching. This is good stretching too in the upper body, okay? Hands up, okay? It's, it can be hard to do for five minutes, okay? And then you can tip this way, 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 tip that way. Make sense? So the edges of the feet, legs are parallel, right? Okay. And then we're tipping and turning. Feet make a slight turn as you tip them. We can incorporate that rotor motion of the legs. Upper body staying forward. Okay, hands staying, they're not going like this. Okay. <clears throat> now we come back to center. And then to the side, there, and to the side, there, and to the side, there. So just that little movement of raising up fights that, that gravitational pull in skiing. 
um, at, when you make a turn, you plant the pole, and people tend to just let that arm swing back. Okay, and this this practice here will help you keep that uh, get that muscle memory going for on the snow with your arms. All right, so that feels good. That's a little heat up in the shoulders. Okay, so we'll go into some stretching. Stretching I like to do and, and make sure I'm stretching those muscle systems that we just exercised. Okay, so the calves, the calves, what I like to do with the calves is I actually put my heel up, pull my toe back, and I pull that leg back like you're trying to scrape it on a carpet and pull that back and you'll feel some stretch. I feel mine right behind the knee this, and into the top of the calf. Okay, and then you want to turn your foot. So we're exercising the edging on the inside and pulling back and stretching those calves all the way to the limits of motion. It does help to breathe while you're stretching these. Okay. Now I'll probably spend, generally I spend a little more time on stretching and I don't go through a whole routine. Uh, generally, actually a lot of times I don't even go through this whole workout in one fell swoop. Okay? So stretching you just kind of work with sore and rotate and stretch at the limits of motion. Rotationally, edging wise, right? And then you can exercise your your flexion and extension. So we're we're st stretching and actuating those muscle systems in all those movement patterns that we just worked out. Does that make sense? So we're fully rotated, the leg in the hip socket, stretching. I feel this stretch right up into the back of my calf and into my my hands. It feels really good. Uh, tipping that feet because we'd be making a turn this way, right? So I got this foot edge engaged as if I'm turning that way. Ah, oh, that's nice. Uh, and then everywhere in between, both sides, everywhere in between. Okay? Oh, nice. Everywhere in between. Okay? So how to get your calves, you can work on those as long as you need to. Um, the, the thighs, I work on those a lot by uh, sitting back on them, I call it a kid sit, because it seems like you always see kids being able to sit between their feet. Um, I don't know if it's just me wanting to be a kid or what, but I start practicing this and I found it helped my knees a lot for skiing and it gives me the confidence that if I get into a maximum position like you know, in the bumps or moguls or something where you just max out everything, my legs can go there. If they can't go there, if you only have the ability to go to here and you slam something really hard, you can hurt your knee. Uh, that's why I do this stretch. So, but again, this is one of those things you better check with your PT or doctor because um, I made all this up. <laughs> And it's helped me tremendously. My ankles, I couldn't do this two years ago. <clears throat> so we're trying to stretch the hamstrings, okay? You can, if you can't get back in exact position, that's fine. Sit on a pillow or something, and then work those, work those muscles however you need to work them to get them to stretch, okay? <sighs> Just follow your, uh, Follow your tightness, your pain. It's all going to be different. Okay. Okay, so prevent an injury. Okay, if we have the ability to move in a contorted position, if we ever accidentally get in a contorted position, we're not going to be hurt. Okay. I don't know when I'd ever crash like this, but <laughs> anyhow, no worries. Okay, so there's the hamstrings or the, the thighs and then We'll work the hams. I like to work those and sit around in this uh, in a spread eagle position. Uh, I, I work out on a mat that has dimensional features to it, so I can I can know that I'm reaching the exact same point uh, with both sides of my body. 
and there's not anything mechanically or, or uh, soft tissue tendon wise or something that, that's holding me back from being balanced because skiing is a balanced sport. What we do on this side, we want to be able to do on this side equally, right? So we want to try to train our bodies to be as balanced and symmetrical as possible and that's why I uh, took on this magic carpet. Yeah. Okay, so I work this around. And again, we're going to tip our feet on edges. We can flex and extend in those positions. We're going to stretch and at functionally stretch this leg system as you rotate it to the outside. Okay, and rotate it to the inside. You know, functionally stretch this kidney, stretch the hip, the hams, and the groin. Okay, so we're on this edge because that's the way we carve a turn if we're going this way, right? Tip in the knee, in the hip socket, tip the knee up there. And trade it back and forth with both sides. Nice. Ah. Okay, tipping the edges, always thinking about tipping the feet. Okay, if we're staying on these edges or staying on those edges. In a turn, this leg would be bent, that would be extended. <laughs> We would never do a turn like this, but the concept is still there for thinking about this edge change from foot to foot to foot and keeping those in time will develop a muscle memory and instinctual ability to tip the feet together. It's just going to happen if we train and, and uh, program that into our systems. Nice. So we get a good stretch there. Work that slow. You can work it in front, tipping the feet side to side as you stretch these. Ah, oh, that's really good. That works too. Nice. Make sense? Tipping. Nice. Ah, oh, I love that. Oh. Tipping and rotating the legs. Turning the edges of the feet, rotating the legs, and working those muscle systems. And everywhere in between. Okay, you can do this standing, reaching the ground, or whatever. The main thing, one thing I find really important is to try to keep the lower back arched. Some strain in there, it feels like I'm kind of rounded it more than I like to. Get it arched, okay, and rotate, use all. We're working all those. Um, core concepts of uh, rotor edging and pressure, those core muscle systems are the fundamental muscle systems that we use in skiing. And those are defined, I've learned those from PSIA, my teaching and clinics at, at uh, do the Professional Ski Instructors Association. And I believe they get it right on. I think it works really good with my workouts. And uh, it shows my skiing is improving. Uh, to the level I have no idea I'd ever ski like at this level in my life or teach at this level. So anyhow, okay, so that's that. Uh, shoulders, upper back. We've got a good shoulder stretch while we were working out. The arms, my shoulders feel pretty good. Um, neck rolls are always kind of nice. Uh, Don't roll. And it works all the way around. Crouch back. Spine didn't work on it. I don't do a a ton of the neck rolls, but you know what? They're nice to do. Crack, pop. Mm -hmm. Upper back, there's some uh, other things you can do. You can roll over on your back. Um, don't like to do that one that often. Mostly the reaching. Feel that in my in between the shoulder blades that really stretches those out. And if uh, again, if you're centered on the carpet, you can make sure you're going to the same points. Ah, and pull them to the back. And this is one that I like to have video of um, because I can look at my arms and see where they're coming. <laughs> what level they get to and I can study what 
kind of imbalances I might have in my back system. So those are good. That's good stretching exercise. Uh, pulling these over. Mm, that feels so good. A lot of stretching for me is just uh, a, more of a self-discovery of where my pains are. So, good. Do lots of stretching. Okay. So in summary, with the lesson, we've got lots of focus on uh, rotor edging and pressure. Okay. Right. Overall balance is going to be affected and benefited by having strong right. feet. Edging wise, okay. But we have strong feet pressure management wise, flexing and extending. So we manage the pressures, okay. We manage the edges. And then we got rotation ability, okay? We developed all those muscle systems of those uh, that we use in skiing, fundamentally use in skiing. Some are very underdeveloped. I would say focus a lot on this outer system, keeping the knee out over the outside while you rotate, okay? This outer leg system is really underdeveloped. The inside ski of a lot of skiers has uh, trouble tends to go flat. When you're on a turn, it tends to be in here and, and right and flat. Uh, so focus a lot on those. Uh, and the rotation ability. You know, we just don't do that in normal life. We don't have real strong muscle systems to rotate uh, our legs within our hip socket. Uh, so we got rotor, edging, pressure, and balance is going to be developed overall, okay? So right. that's, uh, right. that's about an hour lesson. It takes you all the way through your body for skiing. I want this to uh, work for you, okay? The idea is to create ski movement muscle memory on land. So when you hit the snow, you're going you're gonna to be fired up, taken off, just riding and making movements that you didn't know would, uh, you could make. Okay, so that's the plan. Thanks for training with me. Uh, call me. Or uh, email me at, at sm flathead sport movement <coughs> at bresnan.net. Nah, it's moved to see at gmail.com. Sm at bresnan.net. Move to ski at gmail.com. Move the body. Well, that was my 2010 debut. I did a one hour <laughs> workout for skiing. <sighs> okay, something like that. So, yeah, here we go. It's 2021. Peace.